This week's blog post is on Brook Green Gardens with photos from June 2020. I've posted on Brook Green Gardens before, cropping the photos to show just the sculptures. But one of the marvelous features of Brook Green is that many of the sculptures have a small garden or another area that's specifically designed to set them off. In this series of posts with photos taken, as I said, in June when the gardens were full of flowers, I'm trying to give a sense of those gorgeous settings. First up, Louise Peterson, The Apollo of Dogs, created in 2006. This pair of Great Danes guards the entrance to an outdoor gallery of small sculptures. One of the dogs has natural ears, and the other, in the distance, has cropped ears. Casts of this pair are available for purchase. The link is in the blog post. This is Boy and Chickens, created in 1896 by Harriet Hyatt Mayer who was Anna Hyatt Huntington's sister. Brook Green Gardens also has her charming girl with a fish, and I've given you a link to a photo of that in the blog post. This one is called Orphans, created in 1931 by Pietro Montana. Montana also sculpted the striking Dawn of Glory monument in Highland Park, Queens, which honors local men who died in World War I. That's a picture of it on the right of the video. When I visited Dawn of Glory last time, it was in the middle of a construction zone. I hope to take more photos of it once the crazy dies down in New York City. But meanwhile, this particular small sculpture of Montana's is quite charming and is the reason that Animal House, Animal Farm, sorry, ended up in the recommendations this week. The Sun Vow, 1899. A larger version of this work by Herman A. McNeil is in the Metropolitan Museum's American Wing Courtyard. According to the Met's site, quote, while living in Chicago in the early 1890s, McNeil had learned of a rite of passage that captured his imagination. Before Boy on the threshold of manhood could be accepted as a warrior, he was required to shoot an arrow directly into the sun. If the chieftain judging the boy's prowess was so blinded by the sun's rays that he could not follow the flight of the arrow, it was said to have gone out of sight, and the youth passed the test." In New York City, McNeil also sculpted Washington as commander-in-chief for the Washington Arch and several busts at the Bronx Hall of Fame. This is End of the Trail, 1915. James Earl Fraser sculpted the Theodore Roosevelt that either is or used to be in front of the American Museum of Natural History on Central Park West. He has also created the noted explorers and naturalists who are high above the street on the American Museum of Natural History's facade. That's Daniel Boone, James John Audubon, Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and he sculpted the array of wild animals on the frieze that flank the museum's entrance. I've given you a link in the blog post to all those sculptures. And the last one for this week, Young Diana, 1924. This is by Anna Hyatt Huntington, and I actually like it better than Huntington's Diana the Chase, which is a centerpiece of Burke Green and will appear in a forthcoming post. She has so much energy and movement, and it's almost a sun vow moment, although she apparently gets to judge for herself whether the arrow goes high enough. The URL for Brook Green is at the lower corner. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantyWriter.com. Thank you, as always, for listening.